The curved Japanese sword was perfected around the mid-10th century. Its sophisticated construction of folded and laminated steel with a differentially hardened edge not only produces a blade that is incredibly efficient, but one that is also intrinsically beautiful. The Yushuka Museum in Yasukuni Shrine is the venue for the annual New Year Modern Japanese Swords Exhibition by smiths from Tokyo and surrounding areas. This annual exhibition is not only a rare opportunity to see the wonderful workmanship of these traditional craftsmen, but also a chance to see them demonstrate their skills. A sword's beauty is determined by the combination of its curvature, the subtle differences in the hues and textures of the steel, the grain pattern caused by the folding process, and the crystalline pattern along the cutting edge created during the hardening process. No two swords are identical. However, swords do contain identifiable traits that allow connoisseurs to attribute them to a particular maker. The ultimate pattern of the crystalline structure of the hardened edge is beyond the absolute control of the smith. To the Japanese, this makes the sword not merely a weapon, but a sacred object that has been bestowed upon them by the gods of Japan. Fujishiro Kisato is recognized by the government as Mukansa, or Master Craftsman. He is the third generation head of the Fujishiro Polishing School and the son of the late living national treasure polisher Fujishiro Matsuo. Here he is demonstrating a technique known as Hadori, the final stage of sword polishing. Using his thumb and a paper-thin stone and water, he carefully follows the pattern of the hardened edge of the blade, called the hamon. Horimono are symbolic or religious images that are carved into Japanese swords. Hashimoto Shuha is a professional carver and has won many prizes at the annual exhibition held by the Sword Museum in Tokyo. Here, he is carving a depiction of the Buddhist deity Fudo Myo, the Immovable, a patron deity of swordsmen. Under the watchful eye of swordsmith Takehana Shigehisa, visitors are able to handle the blades, sense the feel and balance of the workmanship, and view the beauty of the hamon. The appeal of Japanese swords can clearly be seen here, with men, women, and people of all ages waiting patiently in the long queue for the chance to view the exquisite blades. Various sections of the sword making process are demonstrated. Here, swordsmith Tanaka Sadanori is using a metal plane called a sin to smooth the surface of the blade. Visitors also have the chance to speak directly with the swordsmith. Swordsmith Shimojima Fusahiro is demonstrating and giving an explanation of the Suchioki process. In this process, clay is applied to the blade before it is quenched. <laughs> その中に作るんですけど、
だから刀とかはもっと長いものなので、あのー、大体焼き入れる前と比べると大体いい。5ミリとか1センチぐらいは普通に動いてくれるだから反りが強い刀を作るときはある程度反らせた状態で焼き入れるんですけど昔の,あの聖徳太子が持ってた直方に行ってまっすぐな刀がありますよねああいうまっすぐな刀を作る場合は逆に刃の方にちょっとお辞儀をしてる形で持って焼きを入れてあげるんですでそうするとこう起き上がってきてまっすぐに最終的に仕上がるようにするんですけどでそれがまた焼き入れの温度が高すぎたりとか無理な焼き入れの仕方をするとたまにこのそ,そろうとする力に負けてここにひびが入るそれは歯切れっていうんですけどそういうのが出ちゃうともう今までのように失敗しちゃうまあそれを怖がってるといい焼き入れが入らないしあ,のあんまり景気よく一気に切ると失敗も多いっていうのがその辺は結構難しいところです As well as all the information that can be gleaned at an event like this, it is also a wonderful opportunity to buy personalized gifts, engraved by the swordsmiths before your very eyes with messages of your own choice. Unique keepsakes from a unique experience. Don't miss this opportunity to experience true Japanese culture firsthand.